Lincoln here from the Family Training Institute, FamTFamily.com, where we provide mentoring so that strong individuals can become strong families. Thank you for purchasing this course on the IVEM Peer Pressure Management System. In about 45 minutes, we want to give you a tool that will help you to, one, understand what peer pressure is, the uses of peer pressure or the value of peer pressure, how to identify your peer group, value your peer group, exit or embrace your peer group, and maintain your peer group. We do hope that you, you will enjoy this course, share it with your family and friends, and join us. Peer pressure refers to the influence of a peer group, peer here meaning people that are similar in characteristics like you, the influence of a peer group, observers, or an individual that this individual exerts to encourage somebody else to change their behavior, to conform to the behavior of the influencing group or individual. For example, this could be the pressure of, teen, of one teenager and another teenager to smoke or to, to join the military or to do something good, such as to train or to exercise or eat, proper, eat have a proper diet. So in short, uh, peer, this is pressure. Peer pressure is pressure from those you share something in common with to do what's trending. The issue that we face is not so much peer pressure, because peer pressure is inevitable, but it is the improper management of peer pressure that causes a problem. Peer pressure is not a problem in its own, but it is the challenge for people to manage that pressure in the right way. About two or three things can happen when peer pressure is not managed properly. One, the wrong values can be praised and transmitted. If you're in a group and that group is a bad peer group, and for example, they are, they are influencing you to overeat, and you, by not overeating, you become a deviant in that group, the wrong value, the value here is gluttony, can be praised if you're in a group of gluttons, and they will transmit gluttony to you. If you are not managing peer pressure right, you will also become a glutton. So that's number one. The wrong values can be praised and transmitted in that example, gluttony. Two, people can become intimate with the wrong peers. Where you don't properly manage peer pressure, you can become closer, develop good relationships with people that are doing the wrong things. For example, you become closer to gluttons the more you are come under the influence of gluttony and submit to that influence. So you can become closer to the wrong peer group when you mismanage the, the peer pressure. Three, the wrong deviant behavior is penalized. So if you don't want to become a glutton, I'm just going with the glutton example, you're in a group of people that overeat and you do not want to overeat. And you become now the person who is seen as the picky eater when really all you're doing is exercising self-control with food. You That deviant behavior is penalized, you're teased, you're ostracized, and people basically punish you for doing what is, what is right in, when you're in a, wrong, in a wrong peer group. So these are some of the problems with mismanaging peer pressure. There are different degrees of peer groups that you can have. We believe at FamTFamily.com because we are a messianic mentoring uh, institute. We believe that your spiritual peer group is the highest level of peer group that you can have. Your spiritual peers are those who share the same spiritual beliefs like you. And we believe that we're 
you have spiritual influence, that spiritual influence is supposed to improve your spiritual fitness. We see spiritual fitness as the capacity to become closer to God and where it is that you are looking at your highest level of peer who are going to have who are going to be the people that have the strongest influence on you these should and can be people who will make you become closer related to jesus christ and that's all of you being a messianic training institute there are other kinds of peer groups that you can have biological peer groups you can have family peer groups uh, these are lower level professional peer groups, your marital peer group. So we don't believe that there should be any peer group that is of any higher importance than your spiritual peer group. There are times when you will have to check even your marital partner if that partner is influencing you in a way that makes you get further away from Christ. They're influencing you to do things that Jesus Christ would not honor. You have to put that person in subjection or not influence, not subject yourself to that person's influence, to your partner's influence in that regard. We're not saying that you're going to totally don't play everything your, your partner says. But in that case where that your partner might be tempting you to eat the apple, as people said in the Genesis context, to do something that's wrong, morally you can downplay that influence and seek the influence of your highest spiritual peer for us here that is jesus christ so now that we understand a little bit about what peer pressure is and why it is important uh, we know we said in three there are three bad things that can happen when you mismanage peer pressure we are looking now at the IVEM pressure management, four elements of that, where I is group identification, identifying your group. And that's important. Proverbs 13 verse 20 tells us that he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Very important to identify your peer group so that you know whether you're with people who are making good choices or bad choices. Good defined here from our messianic viewpoint as choices that please God or Yahweh Elohim, creator of the heavens and earth according to the biblical narrative for us here in Christian faith, the father of Jesus of Nazareth. And bad or foolish groups being those that do things to displease Yahweh. So in exercise one, we want to identify and list the groups and persons in each group, each peer group, you are in example your professional peer group those you work with your lunch break those that you let's say you're in school uh, you or you have a group of people that you generally interact with throughout the day it might not be people that you work with because sometimes people might have a, a lunch break group that's different from the people that they work with uh, you want to also identify people in your family people in your church so you have a list of here, as you see in the group, in the, the slide above, or well, the slide, group one could be your family, group, your family peer, you list their names, first person, second person, third person, etc. And you have basically a way in which you identify people based on similar similarities that you have with them. Similar working relationships, similar family relationship, similar, I guess, lunch break relationship similar religious groups so you want to list those people list their names but also list what is the similarity that you have with these people after we identify our peer groups we now want to value those peer groups philippians 4 verse 8 tell us to only meditate on certain things whatever things are true whatever things are honest whatever things are just whatever things are pure, etc., if there be any virtue and praise, think on these things. And Romans 12, verse 2 and 9, they instruct us to not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So we want to value groups based on whether these groups encourage us to think on things that please God, to think on whatever true, whatever things are honest, etc., 
if a group leads us into lies, leads us into things that are not of good report, that is a bad group and we want to value the groups that we're in based on whether they, not just based on how we're connected to them, which was what the identification did in the first step, you know, whether you're connected through bloodline, through working together, through eating lunch, to, lunch together throughout the day, etc. So we're moving from now, not just how are we connected to the group, but we're looking at our spiritual values, our moral values. We want to list the values that are in each peer group. What do you have in common with each peer group? What does that group spend the most time doing? Do you want to share the commonalities that you have identifies, identified with those groups? So in your group one that you identified, let's say if that group was your family, that, but when you look at your family, all your family does is gossip or your, your family spends 90% of the time together gossiping, talking down other people, or, or if all your family does is, is recreation, your family values leisure, recreation, your family is not into improving their, their livelihood, they're not into improving their relationship with God, then you want to know your value, your, the, the group value of your family is recreation. And we want to look at the, the, the things that the group spends time doing, the, the things that the group spends time thinking about. We want to remember that high-value groups, and you want to do this for all the rest of groups right, that you, you identified or you had a connection with in the identification step in step one. So now, what's a high-value group? A high-value group matches well with Yahweh's word including the core value of love. 1 John 4, 78 tells us, that God, tells us that God is love. Anybody who loves is born of, of God and knows God, experiences God, is intimate with God. 1 Corinthians 13 teaches us the, 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 the breakout, the characteristics of love. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not boastful, it does not rejoice in iniquity, love rejoices in truth, etc. So when you go down the checklist of 1 Corinthians 30, well, quote-unquote checklist, or the character reference of 1 Corinthians 13, you want to look and check off whether the group so that you have identified, they, they check well, they conform well to 1 Corinthians 13. If they don't, then that means that you would value them low. They are not, uh, you're not supposed to be influenced easily by those persons. Now that we have identified our peer group, we have valued our peer group based on whether this group encourages and promotes love, we now have a choice to make. This is exercise three. You want to decide whether you exit or embrace this peer group. Exiting is whether you reject the pressure, reject the influence of the group. Embracing means whether you submit to the pressure of the group. We want to also assess the consequences of our decision. And we give you some biblical references that can help you in deciding and, and processing how you exit or embrace a group. Do you want to exit or embrace the group? That's the choice that you have to make. You, it's not about saying that I want to exit or embrace a group. The decision to exit a peer group is when they put a choice before you to influence you to conform to if it is that they are vaping, for example, or if that group is going to... to to a charity event to help, let's say, people who, are ear, who have a hearing impairment. At that moment, if you choose to say yes to the group, you have embraced the group. If you choose to say no to the group, you have exited the group. The exit or embrace of a group is not in a word that you say, but it is in the action that you make to either submit to the group or to resist the influence of the group. What we say here at FAMT is you always say yes in every choice. 
as a no is still a yes to an alternative. For people who have a problem saying no, you can look at yes or look at no, sorry, as an, an alternative, uh, the opportunity cost to, the, to, the, to yes, to another yes, an alternative yes. So when you have people who are, let's say, don't like to say no, you can always say, well, I'm just saying yes to something else or I have a better alternative that I can make. If you are being influenced to overeat or you're being influenced to accept a certain religious group or a certain gender group or a certain sexual orientation and you reject it, you can say, you know what, I have an alternative that I prefer to this one. If you have a problem, it's said no. So exit or embrace is the next step. You identify your peer group, you value your peer group. No, do you exit or embrace the peer group? We want to be a little more practical in helping, especially those who have a problem with saying no. We know no is something that, especially a lot of teenagers, teenagers have a difficulty with saying. When we're children, we find it very easy to say no. We say no to our parents, we say no to everyone. But as we grow up, we experience significant pain, significant negative uh, negative associations with saying no. Saying no often is is seen as something that is not pleasant because we have had experiences in the past where persons have told us no. We see how it feels when we are told no. We know that if we are more aware of what no means as we get older. So we tend to avoid it. So to exit a peer group, you have to say no, but how do you say no? You can communicate your core values. So we have CATT as an acronym to help you to understand how you can say no, how you can exit a peer group. We have said that you can always say, you know, I've said yes to something else or I have a better alternative to this. That's one kind of script in your head that you could use or you can verbally say that or something along that line. You can communicate your peer, to your peer values in terms of how you can exit a peer group. If, for example, you are being influenced to accept a certain religious view or persons are telling you that, that, um, that you should worship on a particular day or you should uh, not eat a particular food... Uh, because of whatever reason they want to face, you could say, you know what, in my family, we have a more, a more free, we value freedom more based on, on this particular, particular anchor that you might have. Or we, if you are in, in if you actually support um, a particular view, you could say, you know, my family supports this view or I am at my, I have, I've, I really value this particular thing. I value um, the right to bear arms if you are somebody who believes in the right to bear arms. You don't just talk about the particular thing you say no to, but you, uh, you align it to a particular value, a core value that you have. If that value is freedom, if that value is the right to protect your family, you can exit a particular group. Let's say a group of pacifists are trying to influence you not to purchase a firearm, but you're, you're strongly influenced by your love for your family, you want to protect your family, you want the welfare of your family. In cases where the state breaks down or is not able to, to get to you in time, communicate the value that, and, and leave it there. Link your no to a higher value. You can also, A, ask others their values before asking for advice. If you're asking someone for advice, they're going to give you advice based on their value system. So you can understand whether you want to exit or embrace a peer group by asking persons their values before you submit to their advice. The third thing you can be aware of in exiting a peer group is tell people when their advice is not welcome. Sometimes you might want to be in a group and you might just want someone to listen to you. You might, just, you might just need someone to give you a, an ear. You know, you know what, I'm going through something right now. 
And I don't really need advice, but I just need someone to be there to listen to what I'm saying. Can you do that? So you're letting the person know, I'm not really open to your influence right now, but I really just need someone to listen to me and not to judge what I'm saying, not to give me any advice, not to share their views or their values with me. Just listen. So you can tell people when their advice is not welcome. You're not open to, to, to their influence. You just want an open ear. And that sounds like something self-centered. Self, um, but if you are around people that you know you might not share their views, uh, you, can, you might not share their values, you just want to, them to share air with you, that's an option that you can use. The fourth thing is to thank God for the discipline and the discernment, is a religious word, or awareness, consciousness, to avoid bad advice and influence. And one of the ways that we can understand about discipline and discerning between good and bad advice, we can read the scriptures, Psalm 1 is a very good example. Um, Proverbs is a very good example of how to look at good versus bad influence and advice. So the exit prayer groups, we know this is a long spiel here, but you want to communicate, C, your core values. You want to ask, A, others, their values before asking for advice. You want to tell people, T, when their advice is not welcome, and you want to thank God, T, again, for the discipline and discernment to avoid bad advice and bad influence. Now that we have identified our peer group, valued our peer group, we have decided whether we want to exit or embrace the peer group, the next issue, which is one of the most important issues that we, we need to discuss and develop a skill group of, a skill set, sorry, of doing is to maintain our peer group. So in exercise four, we decide here that we want to maintain our group. We want to build a relevant label for ourselves. So Romans 12, 1 to 2 teaches us about not conforming to the world, but being transformed by the renewing of our mind. However, once you have decided that you want to be either someone who is uh, uh, someone who believes in Christ or someone who don't, which we believe those are the two ultimate peer groups, but whatever label you decide for yourself, Revelation 22 verse 12, which is another reference from the Holy Bible, teaches us that there is a time coming when we won't be able to change. We won't be able to make any, any have any, even despite the remorse that we might feel, we, might mean we won't be able to make any life-changing decisions to our life. We're going to be stuck in the group, in our peer group that we have decided to host. It says, he that is unjust, let him be unjust, still unjust meaning unlawful, uh, not fear, one who doesn't follow the laws of God. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, one that is in right standing with God, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Context to that is, is something that we encourage you to, to discover on, on your own time. But we know Revelation is a book of consummation of the redemptive purpose of God. God is going to free humanity from the version of humans that are selfish and self-centered, egotistical, who, do, who think of themselves more than they think of God. And now we understand that in that process, there's going to come a time when you can't change, you can't repent, you cannot make any life-changing decisions to move out of a peer group. So now, seeing that you're stuck in a peer group, how do you maintain yourself in that peer group? This is what we want you to develop the skill set of doing. If you have decided that you are going to hold on to a label of being selfish, of being someone who, who, who is self-centered, then you might have to know, plan forward to being lonely. You will have to plan at being someone who people will not be will not be warm towards because we know that life has a cycle a cyclical way to it where the energy that we give out is what we will receive so if we are selfish you have to understand that people are going to be selfish with us you have to plan for that we have to get ourselves ready to live a lonely life to live a life where 
even if people are around us where they're not going to engage us they're not going to be people who will really have any any dear value to us and vice versa so in group maintenance now we're deciding how do we sustain ourselves under the label that we have built and 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 boxed ourselves into let's take a moment to talk about peer groups and superiority there are many people who look at their peer groups and look at the uniqueness of the group and use that to think that or to act in a way that is superior to others. Peer groups signal a difference and we're making the point that even though we're different, we are all connected through Christ. Acts, Acts chapter 17 verse 28 say that in Christ we live and move and have our being. Once we exist, the Bible teaches us that we exist based on the grace of God, that grace of God is now um, fully expressed in Jesus Christ. So anywhere we are experiencing the mercy of God, the grace of God, the kindness of God, the favor of God, we are experiencing that through the man Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Acts seventeen twenty eight teaches that we exist in Christ. So we are all connected, whether we believe in Christ or not. The scriptures teach us that we have our existence based on Jesus Christ because he is the one in whom the full grace of God is. The other point we want to remember is that unbelievers are not inferior to believers as Christ paid for the whole world's sin. If there is one price for both believers and unbelievers, the economic value, if you look at it from a value standpoint, both are valued the same. They're, the sinner and the, un, and the believer are not valued differently based on the fact that there is one price that was paid for both. John 3.16 tells us that. We should also not unfairly judge anyone thinking ourselves superior. Romans 3.23, etc. in Romans tells us that all of sin and fall short of the glory of God, the impact of God, the honor, the splendor of God. We have all not shown ourselves to be a good selfie of God, whether you're Jew or non-Jew, whether you're male or female. Whatever your peer group is, we should all judge or judge ourselves as people who depend on the mercy of God and not think ourselves, not judge ourselves as superior to anyone else because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The next thing we want to remember is that Christ pursued those that are not in his peer group to restore them. So even though groups are unique and different and we tend to gravitate towards our peer group, we see Christ towards no sin gravitate towards the, the peer group of people called sinners because in his mind, uh, my understanding from how I've, I've, I've felt him think through the scriptures is that human, the, the peer group of human is a more important one than any subgroup below that that we choose so even if one is a sinner one is still a human and he's trying to restore us and he has made that he has done that he has restored those who believe in him to the image of god as the book of colossians teaches us so christ pursued those that are not in his peer group to restore them so that they could be in his peer group so if you're not in a particular peer group let's say you are a black woman and you are interacting with white men at this time there is an opportunity for you to share with persons who are not in your peer group the message of jesus christ and there's no feeling of even in doing that you're not better many christians feel that because you're saved by grace you're better than an, an unbeliever and again we've went through the fact that the same price was paid for the believer and the unbeliever so we're both valued the same by god congrats for reaching to the end of another FAMT rally we are hopeful that you take this information seriously as we know that as social beings, we all have to interact with social pressure, peer pressure. And we do believe that it's important that we identify our peer groups, value our peer groups, exit or embrace, and then maintain our peer groups. 
And we think that we have provided some information that assists you in doing that. We don't believe you've wasted your time today. And we want to congratulate you. We have contact information that we have provided in this slide. Connect at famtifamily.com is our email. And our Facebook handle is famtistrong. Have a great day. Why rub God on this world of you and your family? Let's be strong individuals in strong families and be nuclear.